Howdy y'all! Today we're back with the third episode of my custom CMF figure series and since it was highly requested after the previous one, I think I have no choice but to show you my western minifigures. It's no secret that I've always been a huge fan of this theme back in the day and you could even see a couple of mocks on my channel, so for this video I've selected a couple of my favorite figures from these builds, made some upgrades, added a few new ones and of course designed the layout for the boxes and leaflets as I usually do in these videos. So it's time to settle up and get ready for one hell of a ride as we discover the next 12 custom minifigures we all need in our collections, so let's get started right now. The western theme was introduced in 1996 with a couple of sets showing the life of cowboys, bandits and cavalry and then continued the next year with the addition of a new faction, Indians and even though it wasn't a huge line of sets, it for sure took a lot of us by heart with a lot of fans falling in love with this series that lasts till this day. So that's where I come in with the third series of my minifigure line so let's see what I made, shall we? But first, you know the drill. For me not to have a bounty on my head, I just gotta say that the LEGO logo is a trademark of the LEGO group which does not sponsor, authorize or endorse this product and it was only made for entertainment purposes, not for resale. This time I went with the red color scheme because as a huge Red Dead Redemption fan it was the first thing that came to my mind and I think it fits the theme perfectly. Of course we have a band of figures on the front of the box with all the necessary information all around and looking at the back of the box this time I decided to add my own logo because I always felt like something was missing here in the previous two editions. Going along with the box we naturally have a leaflet here as well also made with a red pattern same as the box and on it we have our 12 beautiful minifigures. Now because there were several factions in the western theme of sets, this time I decided to divide them a bit differently. So we have 2 outlaws, 2 lawmen, 2 native americans, 2 cavalry soldiers and the remaining 4 are civilians you can typically meet in a western town. But now let's put this leaflet aside and let's finally get to unboxing the entire series and let's see these figs up close. Now we start. And let's start big as the first minifigure I got for you guys is one of two cavalry soldiers I've included and that is the general. I used the classic blue torso straight from 1996 along with pants I borrowed from Han Solo, a white hat and some golden epaulets as we are dealing with not only a high ranking officer but also a very stylish one. I also gave him a golden sword and a faithful companion being a bulldog with a color fitting the faction color scheme and we got ourselves an awesome first figure. Alongside the general we also need someone for him to give orders to so I made a regular soldier of the cavalry. He also has a classic chest piece, this time a lower ranking one and for the legs I used the ones from the falconer figure we got in series 24 of the regular CMFs but I decided to remove the belt from them because he looked kinda weird with two belts on him and this way it all goes so well together. I also gave him a standard issue hat which is one of my favorite hat molds to be honest and our bag to carry all of the necessities, a standard revolver in his hand and a letter with some very important orders in the other. Moving on to another beloved faction, we got our first Indian or Native American as you will and this one is a warrior. We already got one in series 10 I believe and that's where I got the hat and tomahawk for this guy but this time his weapon is decorated with a feather made with a simple medivic hand which is a nice little detail I think and in the other he's got a classic shield back from the 90s. Also from the old school figures I got his torso and legs which I think are just great even though it's been almost 30 years since LEGO released those and on his head 
he's got another classic piece being a hairpiece with some braids and a pair of feathers stuck on top. And as a bonus accessory, he's accompanied by a red snake since you can never have enough of those, right? Along to go with the warrior, I also made an Indian chief and that is the second figure from that faction. This guy, aside from the classic hairpiece with feathers, is made with a bit more modern pieces I found in my collection, so I gave him a torso from Aloy from the Horizon game, with arms switched from the Aztec CMF figure, a pair of pants from the Tomahawk Warrior I talked about before, and a brand new head from one of the recent CMF Dungeons & Dragons minifigures. As for accessories, I decided to give him a different shield, also from back in the days, and a more modern dual molded spear, which I also decorated with some feathers. And of course, I've added another snake, this time in dark blue, which if you've been following my channel for longer, you know I have a lot of from my Indiana Jones mock, which was covered in almost 200 different colored snakes. Okay, but now, Let's move on to figures that are more related to an actual western town and first in line we have a female bounty hunter. Dressed in some dirty pants from chasing all of her bounties, a headpiece matching the same mud spots on her face, a green jacket topped with a piece of a poncho and a hairpiece with a hat taken straight from Toy Story, she's more than ready to get another outlaw in the cell. And as for accessories, I got her a pair of binoculars for hunting down those baddies and a long rifle in the other hand, just in case that her target wouldn't want to go down freely. Moving on to the first outlaw from the bunch, we have a figure that's been around with me for already a couple of years, first appearing in my goldmine hideout mock, and that is the brawler. Dressed in a nougat suit that came from one of the hidden side sets, a bowler hat matching the color of the jacket of course, a pair of brown pants with a holster printed and a slight smirk under his curly mustache and you can already see that this guy means business. And so the only fitting accessory that I could give him was a big bag of dollars stolen straight from a bank and a unique revolver that was introduced with the Lone Ranger line of sets. Overall, a very simple figure, but with all pieces going so well together, still one of my favorite western characters I made. Now switching sides once more, we have another one of the good guys and that is the Sheriff. I decided to go with a younger version without any additional facial hair as many of the previous iterations we got of this type of a profession, but still with a classic star decorated hat, a torso from the Lego movie line and a pair of excellent dark brown pants decorated with a printed belt and boots. He of course had to have a revolver, this time a classic mold made in flat silver, which only came with the Sheriff from the 13th CMF series a pair of handcuffs and besides that I also made use of one of the stickers I made for my western saloon mock being a bounty poster with one of the most wanted pieces in the lego community, the spotted goat. No wonder the bounty for it is so high. Next we have the second outlaw from the series, which basically is a slightly modified version of a bandit we got in CMF series 6 but because he had such a great torso and legs, I just had to reuse them here. But not to make the same figure again, I gave him a black mustache piece on his face, along with a very mean facial expression, a black cowboy hat of course, and on top of it all, I gave him a narrow dark brown cape from one of the Mandalorians I had, which acts here nicely as a long poncho thrown on the back like the man with no name from the classic western movies or even a long duster. And as for what he's carrying, he has a black revolver in one hand and a dynamite stick bundle in the other so that everyone knows he's up to no good. Now moving on to some more regular townsfolk, Let's start with a hunter, which also appeared already in one of my mocks, this time in my western saloon I did last year. 
So this guy is dressed in a plain shirt with rolled up sleeves and a pair of suspenders holding a pair of greatly detailed pants and on his head he has a raccoon skin cap that only came in one figure from the Lego Movie Robots that really should make a comeback in some more figures because of how awesome this piece is. As for the head, I used one with an eye patch just to show that's really a hard profession what he does. And in his hands of course he has some fitting accessories being a rifle to which I've added a scope connected with a rubber band and a squirrel he managed to shoot on his last hunting trip. The next figure is actually just a simple generic cowboy that you would definitely meet in an old western town. But I think that we can all agree that with a series like that, we need our plain civilians as well. Dressed in a pair of printed brown pants, an old school brown vest on a red shirt that came with the first original line of western sets, a brown cowboy hat, and to get some color contrast, he got a white bandana on his neck. And for a figure like that, we also need some more or less neutral accessories so I think a classic old grey revolver and a hundred dollar bill in his hands will be just the right choice for him. The next figure is yet another female in the lineup and this one is a saloon girl that just had to make it to the series because what a town would it be without a fine establishment like that and these are inseparable from fine ladies working there. So I gave her a fine matching dress with a short vest, I believe I got somewhere from a build a minifigure in one of the Lego stores and I topped it with a fine white fur collar from the penguin minifigure and a neat hairpiece with a big high bun which just fits so good with this figure. And as for some extras to go along with this figure, I figured a hand fan would be the most fitting here and also I gave her a small kitty because we all know that a dame like this just has to have a cute pussy. And the last figure in the lineup but definitely not least, we got an old gold prospector. The head I'm using here is the one that came with a similar figure we got in CMS series 12 but the rest of the body is totally different. So the pants are olive green ones, dual molded with brown boots, with a printed satchel for some gold nuggets, an old outlaw torso from Flatfoot Thompson that was introduced in the classic western sets, and a messed up hat on his head to complete the look. He's equipped of course with a giant gold nugget in one hand, which must be why he has a, such a big smile on his face, and a tray in another to search for even more gold in the local river. And near that river, a lot of sparrows live, so one of them also made it to be featured in this series, which is a new print from the latest Dungeons and Dragons CMS. And this way partner, we now talked about all of the 12 figures in this lineup and I gotta say that I'm very happy of how this series turned out and I'm looking forward to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about these figures and which one of them is your favorite and of course let me know what CMF series I should do next, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet and check out one of these western builds I previously made or the previous CMFs if you somehow missed them. I will see you cowpokes in the next video here on the channel and for now as always just make sure you keep it bricking.